Okay, welcome back. Uh, in this installment, what we'll do is actually use Pagic and see how it works with, uh, in particular, three different types of network objects, networks, partitions, and vectors. Okay, uh, the first thing that we'll wanna do is actually load up the network that we wanna work with. We are using the data from Exploratory Social Network Analysis with Pagic uh, 2005. Okay, that book comes with a data set. We'll be using the data set associ associated with chapter two. Okay, so what we'll wanna do is we'll want to uh, find the network associated with imports and manufacturers. We'll open it. And you'll see that is, as our first network, it will um, basically load up in the drop-down box first. You should know that uh, it'll give you the full path, okay, including the file name, and it'll tell you the number of nodes in the network. Okay, so here we've got the number of nodes that we can see. Just to get a sense of what we're looking at, let's um, draw it. Okay, and um, one thing that you'll notice, depending on how you actually have your uh, system configured. It may show you the numbers on the links, it may not. Okay, while the numbers on the links are gone up, let's talk about what this is actually modeling. Okay, each uh, node represents a country, okay, and you'll see that the countries are very well grouped into three different groups, which we'll talk about in a second. And each arc, okay, and these are directed links, okay, in this particular case, they're directed and they're weighted. What they are weighted with is a measurement of imports, okay? So what you're seeing are, are the imports of miscellaneous manufacturers of metal, okay? And again, you can get more information about this data in chapter two of the Exploratory Social uh, Network Analysis book. So basically what it's measuring is the value of imports in US in thousands of US dollars uh, between countries. Okay, so this would be a way to study the trade between countries. This particular data, I believe, is from uh, 1994. And um, it's a particularly good example of a core and periphery structure. So this inner circle here is a very clear core of countries. Okay, I'm um, including the United States, China, and so on. Here we see countries in this second ring, we see countries in what we would call a semi-periphery. Okay, and then the outer loop here is the periphery. Okay, countries that are um, away from the uh, center of trading of this particular commodity. Okay, so this gives us a very nice visual of a, of a core periphery structure. And uh, what we want to do is see, well, how can we use this to analyze this data? Right now, we've talked a lot in class about how data can be very cluttered, and this, in some ways, is a good example. We still see a lot of structure based on the nodes, but with all of these arcs and things, and, and especially the, the numbers, I mean, it's, it just sort of becomes a big nest. One of the things we can do quickly is um, just sort of go to lines, Okay, and we don't really need to mark the lines, right? We're just gonna say no. And drop out all of those numbers. Okay, there's just too many of them. There's just way too much going on in this graph for us to really use it. So um, what we realize, the first thing we'll need to do is, this is great for studying sort of a, a large scale structure, but if we wanna drill down into this graph, we'll need some, um, some tools. That's most of what we'll be doing today. All right, so let's go back to the calculator here. And this is where partitions can really help us, okay? One of the things that we might really want to see is we might wanna see a breakdown of this data based on continents, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go get the partition, the .clu file, that will map each one of these nodes to a particular continent, okay? So it'll tell us, you know, all of the continents that these countries are on. All right, we can pull this in. Uh, Pagic has this little report window. I think we've talked about this a little bit before previously. It just tells you, you know, how long certain events take. It, if you run any reports, the values will end up here. Okay, so you want to make sure that every once in a while you check out the report to make sure that things are going okay. One thing to keep in mind, with very few exceptions, you will want to have the same exact number of nodes in your network and its associated partition. Okay, this is something that's really, really important. Um, there's only one example where that might not be exactly the case. 
and um, we, we will talk about those cases later. But uh, generally, you want the same number of values here as in here. Okay. Um, just to get a sense of what the partition actually is, the partition is basically mapping a value to a vertex. Okay. The value is always an integer, and that integer represents a dis a discrete class. Okay. So in this case. Um, the value represents a continent, okay, so one, for example, is Africa, and every country in Africa, including Algeria, will have that classification, okay, so again, Egypt is in Africa, it gets one, uh, and we can go down the line, find more examples, okay, obviously two is Asia, okay, India is in Asia, and so on and so forth, okay, so this is basically just saying that these particular these particular vertices are a member of this class and this class represents a particular continent okay so now what we can do is actually draw redraw the network using these partitions and the labels from this partition okay so it gives us some new some new tools so instead of just saying draw which will draw the network force just fine we'll say draw partition now, all of a sudden, you can see that you have lots of different colors and things, okay? And you're probably suspecting that we could change the labels, and of course we can. So we can say mark vertices using partition clusters. Right. Now, all of a sudden, we can see the cluster number, right? So if Madagascar is in Africa, it gets a 1. Um, Sweden is in Europe, it gets a 3. The United States is in North America, it gets a 4, and so on. Uh, so now we have a nice representation of the continents. Okay, so that's something that's pretty, pretty handy. Okay, um, we're still. Many of you may be feeling like we we still um, have a lot of data here, and it's awfully difficult to see, you know, what's related to what. Um, so let's see if we can do a little bit better in terms of. Uh, making this a, a, a network that we can really look at and understand. Okay, so one of the things that we'll want to do, and, and we talked about the different operations that we can do based on the different types of network objects. One of the first operations that we'll want to explore is the ability to shrink a network. Okay, And if we want to shrink a network, we can do that either based on a partition or based on a hierarchy. And just to give you a sense, a partition, is they are discrete classes, meaning a node can belong to one and only one class that, as they're defined in a partition. A hierarchy is different. It's possible for a node to belong to more than one class in a hierarchy. Okay, So this is sort of one major difference. We haven't really gotten to hierarchies yet. So we'll use a partition. Okay, And the first thing that it'll ask you is, well, What's the minimum number of connections between these clusters that I should accept? Okay, so this lets you define sort of a filter for you know, the minimum number of connections that you want to consider. We want to see them all, okay? So we'll just say one, okay? One is fine. We don't need more than that, okay? Then it'll say, is there any cluster that you do not want to be shrunk? Meaning, I still want to see all of the details of the original network, but I want to shrink everything else. Okay, for this first pass, we're going to say no. Okay, so we say leave it at zero. Okay, and what you'll see, remember, this is sort of a calculator for network objects. You'll see it generated a new network object for us. It also generated a new partition for us. Okay, and notice the number of nodes in the network matches the number of nodes in the new partition. Okay, so if we draw this new network that we just created, we'll see, again, the six continents. Now, one thing that might upset you is that we're getting the labels from the uh, original countries. Okay, that's fine. We can just go change it. Right? We go to partitions, and we can say, well, really, Algeria should be Africa, okay, and Argentina should be... South America, we'll leave Australia as is. We might just take out the hash mark. And Europe, Asia, and North America. 
Okay, now we can redisplay. And close this up. And now if we draw this again, we should see something that's a little more user friendly. Okay, so now we know that we're dealing with continents. Okay, and that's uh, obviously very, very handy. While we're here, um, I want to review something that we talked about in uh, in class last week, where we also, in addition to using node link diagrams, we also really want to be able to use matrices. Um, if you look at this graph, obviously this is a, a, a pretty dense, uh, densely connected graph, right? It's awfully difficult to see exactly what's missing, right? We know it's it's not quite a complete graph, right? Because we can see from Australia that you know, we, we should be seeing five links, but we don't. But, you, you know, it, it just briefly looking at it, it's not quite so easy to see what's missing. Um, also, because it's a directed network, it's, just, it's a little bit, um, it, it would be awfully difficult to be sure of what was actually missing between all of these nodes. Well, this is where uh, we actually have some really nice features to help us in PAGIC. Okay, I think we mentioned before that we could actually um, create matrices that will let us analyze this. Well, it turns out Pagic will let you do that right from here. If you go to File and you go to Network, you can say Export Matrix to Extended Postscript Format. Okay, and you would say Using Partition, okay, because we want to see the partition labels. And you can just say Structural for now, okay? Don't, don't, worry, about, um, don't worry about Delta, we'll just use Structural, okay? It'll, um, the cluster number to show in details. Okay, we don't really need any details for the row, and we don't really need any details for the column. Okay, and what it'll do is it'll give you an EPS format, and you can just name it something that you'd like. So matrix for trade. Okay. And what that'll do is it'll create a nice graphic for you in EPS format. And one thing to keep in mind, you'll need special software to open this. I recommend um, GS View, and I can help you install that if you need. What you'll do is you'll open it up, and you'll see something that looks like this. And let's, well, I guess the orientation is just fine. All right, this is exactly the type of uh, matrices that we were looking at uh, in class. The only difference is that instead of the axis moving down this way. The diagonal actually moves this way, right? So this self loops, right? If Africa trades with Africa, it will be here. If Asia trades with Asia, it will be here and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is the diagonal. And one of the first things we can see by analyzing this diagonal is that each country trades with itself. Okay, this this graph has self loops. And that's awfully difficult to see in the um, in the view that we saw. Okay, self loops as they're drawn on the screen tend to be pretty small, okay? A couple things to note here, a couple things that we can see, as we talked about before, it's much easier to see what's missing here, right? These white blocks are things that are missing. And we can also see that because it's not symmetrical, right? We, we can easily see that this is uh, asymmetrical in many ways. Um, in particular, one of the things that stands out is that um, Australia does not trade, Africa does not trade with Australia, and Australia does not trade with Africa, okay? So it's very easy to find that missing link here in a way that, you know, might not be as easy when we're looking directly at the graph. So I wanted to show you that this was possible with the software, and that this, you should by all means use this for your analysis, okay? We, we'll, we'll talk about this more in the future, but I wanted to show that, I wanted to show you that the software could do this, and that this could actually re really help you with, um, with your analysis.